Britain's Foreign Secretary has condemned Myanmar's junta after its military attaché here in London took over the country's embassy, locking the ambassador out. He spent the night in his car on the street outside, saying he'd been denied entry. Gwaz Ramin said he was told he was no longer his country's representative. Myanmar's military seized power in a coup in February, triggering weeks of protests and escalating violence. The spokesperson for the ambassador has been speaking and he said that the ambassador stopped following the instructions of the Myanmar foreign ministry in March. He has been meeting with many diplomatic counterparts and Myanmar community to discuss the current situation in Myanmar, hoping to find a peaceful solution. Due to his stand, the Myanmar embassy in London has been seized by the Military attaché yesterday evening, the, the ambassador has been locked out since then. There was a coup in Myanmar in February, now in a similar situation in central London. Well, so let's take you straight there to outside the Myanmar embassy and join the BBC's Charlotte Wright. Charlotte, just extraordinary scenes there. What's been happening today? Well, in the past half hour or so, Chul Zonmin did actually turn up again outside the embassy. He arrived here in his car and got out and briefly walked down the road, tried to have a quick conversation with some of the police officers here, had a phone call and then walked back and got in his car and drove off again. Um, of course, there's a lot of interest here, a lot of media here and a lot of journalists who wanted to ask him some questions after that statement that was delivered by his spokesperson um, earlier this morning, but he didn't really... Uh, answer many questions with, with much information really. I asked him whether he was still the ambassador, whether he still sees himself as the ambassador and he said yes. Um, I also asked him if he'd spoken to the foreign office here in London and he didn't say that he had but he does seem keen to have that conversation um, today. Of course he did sleep in his car uh, outside the embassy here overnight last night and when I turned up first thing this morning he was still in the back of his car then but it was his spokesperson who delivered the statement um, a couple of hours later and we heard a little bit um, of it there but the, basically the sort of message that they're trying to get across is that they want the UK government to continue to reject the unlawful military regime in Myanmar they're asking the government to refuse to work with the new ambassador which will be nominated by the military council in Myanmar and they say that they have full faith in the UK UK government to comply with that. So it puts the UK government in quite a tricky situation. It does indeed, Charlotte. And what has the reaction been from the Foreign Office so far? Well, the Foreign Office said this morning that it must accept the decision taken by the government in Myanmar, but it says that it hasn't actually been given any formal notification of his replacement. I mean, we spoke to him earlier, he said that he thought he still was the ambassador. Uh, we had a tweet earlier from the Foreign Secretary, uh, Dominic Raab, who said, we condemn the bullying actions of the Myanmar military regime in London and he pays tribute to the ambassador, the former ambassador, for his courage. Uh, Dominic Raab said the UK calls for an end to the coup and the appalling violence and a swift restoration of democracy. But clearly a very tricky situation for everybody involved. Charlotte, thanks so much. Let's discuss that tricky situation with Dr Ronan Lee of the International State Crime Initiative at Queen Mary University. His research focusing on Myanmar. Good to see you. Before, though, we actually discuss the UK reaction. Why do you think the junta has chosen this moment to do this here in London? Well, they crave international legitimacy and as much as they crave domestic legitimacy. And they're seen internationally and domestically as an illegitimate administration. They're not regarded by the people of Myanmar as the true government of their country. And foreign governments haven't acknowledged them either. This is an attempt to uh, to, to uh, progress their legitimacy on the international stage. Uh, it's been a problem for them that uh, figures like their envoy to the UK, their envoy to the UN, uh, haven't been taking their orders and running their lines internationally. Uh, and they're trying to stop that. This clearly shows that they don't care about international borders either, though. Are you concerned or what do you think they could do now? Well, we should all be concerned. This is an example of a brutal military junta exporting the sort of chaos that they've imposed on the people of Myanmar. We're now seeing uh, the UK police been made complicit in a takeover of the embassy here in, in London. I mean, this is, this is a lockout 
by an illegitimate administration in Myanmar. They've got no right to, to do this. And the UK police shouldn't be aiding and abetting them in, in, in achieving this lockout. And what should the Foreign Office and the UK government be doing? Well, it's pretty simple, I think, for the Foreign Office. They need to match their rhetoric with action. Uh, they need to refuse to accept the legitimacy of the military junta to make decisions like this. Uh, they need to continue to acknowledge uh, the, the ambassador as the ambassador for Myanmar. I mean, the Vienna Convention makes it pretty clear that it's only the legitimate government of a country that can that can exercise diplomatic relations with, with other countries. Uh, the military is not a legitimate administration in Myanmar, and the UK is under no obligation whatsoever to accept any diplomats that they purport to, re that they suggest represent the country, because well, they simply do not represent Myanmar. Dr. Lee, we've seen quite hardened rhetoric from the UN towards the junta, but doesn't the global community have a real problem here with any kind of sustained pressure because they don't have China on board? Well, they, they have neither China nor Russia, but China's got some real interests in Myanmar. I mean, instability in Myanmar is not in China's interests. It's not in ASEAN's interests. Uh, it's becoming, I think, increasingly difficult for China to continue to be a roadblock to action uh, on, on Myanmar at, at the UN. But there are steps that, that countries other than China can take. In the UK, the US and others can simply refuse to accept the legitimacy of Myanmar's military to, to uh, sack and reappoint diplomats. I mean, this is a test now for the UK. This is not about China. This is about the UK. Is it going to match its rhetoric on Myanmar with action? It's a pretty simple action. They should refuse to accept the legitimacy of this military government that's that's murdering people on the civilians on the streets of Myanmar, 600 dead as of as of today, uh, they, the UK government should refuse to accept their legitimacy and refuse to accept any new diplomatic appointments made by that illegitimate government. Dr. Ronan Lee, thank you for joining us. Pleasure.